Here is an example of an image transfer. And what is nice about an image transfer versus a collage piece is that whatever layers you have underneath the painting are gonna show through versus when you have a collage item, you're gonna just glue this down and it's just gonna cover up whatever is behind it. So you can see with this painting too, there's lots of translucency. I did some of the crayon underneath and some texturizing with the oil pigment stick here too. And all of that's coming through uh, underneath my image transfer. So um, let's start. So when I begin an image transfer, I like to trim around my image so that I have a border of white because what we're going to do is we're going to remove the pulp and embed the uh, ink into our wax surface. And right now my painting is warm but not hot or cold. And you want to have somewhat of a very smooth surface so that when the uh, toner is placed onto the surface, it's going to adhere, versus if there's some valleys, then the um, toner is not going to work. So this is a way to get your uh, some image images that have graphic quality into your paintings. And you're going to begin first by having uh, wax paper. And I just like to start burnishing my image with the wax paper, and I'm kind of pressing hard. So I'm going to just do this over the entire surface and um, then we'll get finish the image. So I have burnished this now with my spoon and I've got it pretty well adhered. And um, the idea is that you're pressing that toner into the wax. So you want to have at least three layers of wax um, underneath it and a, again a pretty smooth surface. So I'm going to begin um, to remove the pulp by wetting the paper. And what I love about this technique is it's so simple and you can also draw any of your own drawings or imagery onto um, any kind of paper and then photocopy it or run it through the printer. And then this, that image will work well for this. And sometimes I just like to have a little bit of a graphic quality to my work. And this is um, a pattern from I think kind of a Romo, Roman Greco <laughs> tapestry that I blew up, um, enlarged, and then decreased the size. So I'm just wetting the paper to remove the pulp, and I'm going to do this over the entire surface until I get down to the toner. Getting there, but there is some of the paper left, so I'm just going to work that a little bit more. All right, I'm almost finished. I've got just a little bit more pulp. And once you feel that the painting is very slippery and smooth without any of that cotton uh, paper feel, then you can finish. And I'll usually just wipe off all that pulp, just kind of clean up my surface a little bit. And you can see there are some spots that I might have had some valleys where the toner didn't uh, stick to. So um, that's why I also like to do patterns that are can be altered a little bit. Like you might not want to do someone's face <laughs> or you know something that has really a lot of important detail. So you want to do a high contrast image especially. So I'm just going to whisk this away. And then our last step is we are going to fuse this. And that's why you want to have some wax underneath because it's going to basically come up and grab this toner into the surface. And I'm gonna do this with a heat gun on the low setting um, because I don't wanna add any fire to this. I just wanna add some heat, so I'll do that now. So I don't know if you can see, but what will happen is the toner will start to seep into the heated wax. So you wanna keep the heat gun moving as you're fusing and just fuse completely the whole image and then it will be embedded in the wax just like an, a paint layer. And you can just paint right over that. So voila. Mm -hmm.